Florida is one of the deepest states when it comes to roller coasters. A lot of that can be attributed to Orlando, which is often considered the theme park capital of the world. You have Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, and also SeaWorld. Then about an hour drive away, you also have Busch Gardens Tampa. As of this recording, the state currently has 61 different roller coasters, and that number is only growing. In recent years, all of these parks have been getting exciting new roller coasters. So in this video, I will rank Florida's top 25 roller coasters. If you want more in-depth thoughts about any of these coasters, I have separate reviews already published for many of them, including everything in the top 15. Then before starting this list, I want to note one honorable mention in Rock and Roller Coaster at Disney's Hollywood Studios. This indoor launch coaster just missed the list. I really like the soundtrack, the initial launch, and the first two inversions, but the coaster does quite a bit of meandering for the remainder of the ride. It's a fun ride nonetheless, and it placed at spot 26. Starting off the list at number 25 is Slinky Dog Dash at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for putting this ahead of Rock and Roller Coaster, but I personally find this ride more engaging start to finish. I love the visuals on this ride. You weave your way through Toy Story Land, then the second launch sequence is phenomenal between the theming, lighting, and audio effects. It really amps you up. The layout itself is fairly mild, but you can get a pinch of airtime in the rear row. Number 24, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts at Universal Studios Florida. This attraction feels more like a dark ride for much of the experience. It is a story-driven attraction with the actors from the film returning. It's mostly told through 3D screens, but they are large and crisp. Then there are some coaster elements. Skip ahead 15 seconds if you don't want to be spoiled. I really like the tilt track at the start, especially in the back row. Then the final launch at the end is quite surprising as you blast through the screen. Number 23, Journey to Atlantis at SeaWorld Orlando. This mock water coaster is another attraction with many dark ride elements. This ride starts off with an impressive indoor section. The story has been eliminated, but the set pieces and audio are still fantastic. Then I also like the coaster bits. The largest drop is sizable and offers a pop of airtime. Then the twisting drop at the end is quite the thrill for first timers. And the splashes are refreshing on a hot day. Just beware row one. There's an evil dip midway through that'll soak you. Number 22, Big Thunder Mountain at Magic Kingdom. This is one of the world's best mind train roller coasters. For one, you have that beautiful mountain the coaster interacts with. There are so many near misses as you charge around rocks and zip through tunnels. Two, the forces are solid too. The turns offer nice laterals, especially because there are no seat dividers. Then there are a few dips that'll give quick pops of airtime, particularly towards the back of the train. The finale on this one is a bit of a dud, but the first two thirds are great. Number 21. Expedition Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom. This is another coaster using a gorgeous mountain to its advantage. The sight lines are even more stunning. Then later in the ride, you come face to face with the Yeti. While it no longer moves, the character still looks stunning. Then the Vacoma coaster is quite good too. The largest drop offers a smidge of airtime in the back row. Then this ride shines in the positive G department. There are two forceful helixes, one outdoors, and another indoors that is taken backwards no less. This element is super disorienting and intense. Number 20, Mind Blower at Funspot Kissimmee. At one point, this gravity group wood coaster would have placed in the top 10. The layout is phenomenal. This is an ultra compact ride that's fast paced and jam packed with airtime. Many drops and hills abruptly chuck you from your seat. Then there's an awesome inversion over the station. But this ride has never been the smoothest, and has only worsened over time. To rectify this, Funspot hired RMC to add some steel track to this ride. These sections are now super smooth, and they feel like they give the train a speed boost when you pass over them. 
but it's quite jarring when you switch back to a bumpy wooden part. I've heard the plan is to add more steel track. Once this is complete, Mind Blower should move back up this list. Right now, it's a good coaster, but it struggles in the rewrite department. Number 19, Tron Light Cycle Run at Magic Kingdom. This Facoma motorbike coaster starts off with a punchy launch and a large outdoor turn. The sense of speed during this part is sensational. The indoor bit has some pacing issues due to a multitude of mid-course brake runs, but the coaster compensates in other areas. The ride is sensory overload. The visuals are fantastic between the glowing blue lights and racing elements during the indoor portion. Then there's also an incredible musical score from Daft Punk. Number 18, Kraken at SeaWorld Orlando. This is a strong B&M floorless coaster. The first drop is a little floater airtime, but the highlights are the inversions. Most are forceful and whippy. The best of the bunch is the zero G roll. It offers ferocious laterals and some airtime. The second half has been running a bit slower in recent months due to the mid-course trim, but the last two inversions are still enjoyable as they're buried in these trenches. Number 17, Revenge of the Mummy at Universal Studios Florida. This premier launch coaster is entirely indoors, and it has great theming. The first few scenes have some impressive physical sets, most notably in the throne room. And I also like the fake unload platform later in the ride, complete with all the fire effects on the ceiling. Then the coaster bits are nice as well. The uphill launch is nice oomph. Then the main layout offers two spots of solid floater airtime. And the sense of speed is enhanced by the darkness and 2D cutouts that pop out at you. Number 16, Sheikra Bush Gardens Tampa. This B&M dive machine has an impressive first drop. The holding brake builds anticipation. Then the hypersized vertical drop is chock full of floater airtime. Then the following pull out, Immelman, and high speed turn all pile on the positive G's. Then the second half kicks things off with another vertical drop. This was another plentiful dose of floater airtime while also diving into a tower. The final few elements are not the most exciting though, but I love this ride's first half. Number 15, Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens, Tampa. This Intamin multi-launch coaster is a diverse ride doing a little bit of everything. There are three launches, with the first two having solid kicks to them. Then this coaster has a few notable negative G-spots, as both the Windcatcher Tower and Camelback offer nice ejector airtime. Then the Heartline roll midway through the experience has sweet hang time. The remaining elements are on the milder side, but this ride compensates with its setting. This coaster is a sprawling layout, past some well-landscaped environments, and even some animal enclosures. Number 14, White Lightning at Fun Spot Orlando. This GCI wood coaster is a simple out and back layout, but it is an action packed ride. I love the first drop in the back row, as it offers a strong pop of airtime and wild laterals. Then the rest of the coaster is a series of hills, all of which offer airtime. I particularly like the trio of bunny hills that kick off the return run. This ride is on the shorter side, but it has plenty of elements, and it has remained smooth despite Florida's harsh climate. Number 13, Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando. This premier creation starts off with a quadruple swing launch. The first two passes are mild, but the reverse spike has great weightlessness on the third pass. Then the hump before the top hat delivers abrupt and intense ejector airtime in the last pass. And that really is the story of this ride. Despite its modest size, the top hat and smaller bunny hills all offer strong negative Gs. The ride originally opened with comfort collars, but they were replaced by regular seat belts. I know I'm in the minority here, but I actually find they restrict the airtime more than the older comfort collars. Number 12. Incredible Hulk Coaster at Islands of Adventure. This is an iconic B&M looping coaster. The first half is near perfection. The uphill launch is theatric and very powerful, as it offers strong Gs. 
the subsequent zero G roll is extremely whippy, then the following Cobra roll and vertical loop offer a sustained gray out for me between their power and size. The remaining few inversions are good as well. The ride does lose a lot of speed after the mid-course brake run, so the final few turns are boring, but I love everything that precedes them. And this ride is a wonderful onboard soundtrack as a bonus. Number 11, Kumba at Busch Gardens Tampa. There are many B&M loopers out there, but few are more forceful than this one. The inversions have great sustained positive G's and whip. I typically gray out one or two times in this ride. I particularly love the violent, and I mean that in a good way, zero G roll. Then the layout is nicely landscaped, zipping past trees, and coming close to the ground at several points. I know some find this ride a bit rattly, but it has been smooth for me over the past few years. Number 10, Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. This is one of the better B&M flyers. I love how it fits into the park as it soars over midways and zips past some great landscaping. The layout is strong too. The first drop has wonderful whip in the back. The pretzel loop has immense positive G's. It is the best part of the ride by far. Then the rest of the layout balances power and grace perfectly. There are some floaty inversions and decently forceful turns in between. Number 9, Pipeline at SeaWorld Orlando. The Prototype B&M Surf Coaster makes me very excited for the future of this model. This is a next generation stand-up coaster focusing on airtime. There are several hills that'll send you airborne. It's all floater airtime, but it's sustained, and it's so unique having your whole body, legs included, fly into the air, and it's augmented by the seats bouncing with you. The ride also throws in some positive G's in the valleys for variety. The vest restraints can be a bit tight on your collarbone, but this is such a memorable experience, and it's way more comfortable than the older stand-up coasters. Up next would have been Dueling Dragons at Islands of Adventure. This was a duo of intense B&M inverts. Both sides had strong layouts on their own. They featured snappy inversions and some unique elements such as a camelback and later an Immelman that morphed into a helix. You didn't get elements like that in other inverts. In its early years, this ride also dueled. The visuals and near misses were incredible. This aspect was eliminated in the ride's final years due to some incidents with loose articles, but I'm glad I could experience this ride in its prime. Number 8. Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal Studios Florida This is such a strange coaster, but I really like it. This is a Mauer X-Car coaster. This is a shockingly forceful ride with some underrated airtime moments and forceful turns. There are two main criticisms for this ride. One, it has a lot of mid-course brake runs. However, I don't mind because the entries and exits to these brake runs are sharp enough to offer several instances of airtime. Two, people say the ride is rough. Now it definitely shakes, but I don't find it uncomfortable due to the restraints. And as a bonus, you can pick a song to jam out to while you ride along. Number 7. Space Mountain at Magic Kingdom this is an indoor coaster with two tracks. Some swear the Omega size is better, but both feel similar to me. The biggest impact is how much weight is in the rockets. If you have a heavy train, you can get some sharp air time on the four largest drops. Then the turns are tight, offering quick lateral jolts as well. The ride is jerky, but you're basically riding on a couch, so there's no discomfort for me. The ride is usually near total darkness to enhance the speed as a bonus. The visuals I'm showing are during the Christmas party when they have multicolored lighting on the interior. Usually you cannot see all the track. Number 6. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot This is the best Disney coaster out there. It has a high level of theming between the pre-shows, space-like environment, and the giant screens on ride. Then the layout is dynamic and fast paced throughout. There rise several dips offering airtime and decently forceful turns as well. And enhancing the elements is the fact that vehicles can spin throughout. Then this is a lengthy experience too, 
as it is the world's longest indoor roller coaster. Number 5. Montu at Busch Gardens, Tampa. This is my favorite BNM invert in the country. The ride is both size and power. The inversions are forceful and very snappy, all while remaining smooth. The standout moment has to be the Batwing, a rarity for an invert. The train is violently whipped around the flips, and the valley has intense positive Gs. Then I also like this ride's use of trenches in between the inversions to improve the sense of speed. Number 4. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure This Intamin multi-launch coaster offers two seating options, a lower sidecar and an elevated motorbike. You definitely want the latter. It offers a better sense of speed, and the higher center of gravity makes the turns feel wilder. Those turns also offer some force, and all seven, yes seven, launches have really nice kicks to them. Then this ride also has some surprises in the second half that absolutely add to the experience. Along with the multitude of elements and long experience, this coaster also tells a cohesive story. You pass animatronics, charge through theme structures, and also have on-ride narration. Number 3. Mako at SeaWorld Orlando This B&M hyper coaster is a perfect first half whenever it runs untrimmed. The first drop, giant camelback, and smaller hills all offer incredible and sustained flagector airtime. It is some of the best airtime of its kind out there. It's more power than the other B&M hypers. The second half does let its foot off the gas though, but it's still solid. You get a little airtime, and the final two swooping turns offer some surprise laterals on the edge seats, as well as great visuals. Number 2. Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure This intimate multi-launch coaster combines high thrills and immersive theming into one attraction. The queue establishes a cohesive story, then the first half passes through a raptor paddock with all sorts of near misses. Then the elements are excellent as well. Both of the launches are punchy. Then all four inversions are fantastic. All of them chuck you from your seat in some capacity. I particularly love the high speed stall in the second half, and of course, the Mosasaurus roll. This barrel roll over the water offers both laterals and inverted ejector airtime. Speaking of airtime, this coaster also has plenty of that. The top hat stands out the most, but some of the smaller hills also launch you skywards. And coming in at number one is Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens, Tampa. This RMC hybrid coaster is exceptional. This ride hauls start to finish, and there is not a single dull moment on this ride. Every single element is a winner. It starts off with that colossal beyond vertical drop, it has tons of strong ejector airtime. Then the following hills offer similarly strong airtime, with the giant outer bank and wave turn shining in particular. Then this coaster throws in two inversions, including the epic death roll. This high speed barrel roll is super disorienting, and it offers wicked laterals. Then unlike a lot of other RMCs, this one also offers good positive Gs in the valleys to contrast all those negative Gs. This ride is a powerhouse, and it always leaves me breathless. So those are the top 25 roller coasters in all of Florida. I have no doubt this list will continue to grow and evolve throughout the years, especially with Universal's Epic Universe opening up next year. What are your favorite coasters in the Sunshine State? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.